Hello guys, I hope you are staying safe. My name is Wally Farrell, I'm a tech entrepreneur, and you are watching Tech Roundup, your weekly opinion, views, and analysis of the top tech events happening around the world with a focus on Nigeria. On today's episode, we'll resume our FinTech Roundtable series with a focus on the payment space. The digital payment landscape in Nigeria has changed over the last few years with the adoption of various channels growing between 25 and 50 percent year on year. Even banks are planning deeper participation with investment and acquisition of some of the leading fintechs in the country. In this episode, led by Kumbi, who is the CEO of NetPlus, and Salami, the CEO of Rivi, we explore banks' participation in the payment space, emerging technology in payment, and investment solutions that even you might consider as we all look to carefully manage our resources as we navigate this pandemic. Uh, recently, GT Bank said, uh, the CEO said um, it was very interested in the payment space and it was citing valuation as one of the reasons why, you know, he wanted it. Uh, he said, you know, payment companies are valued 30x earnings and that you know, he said, what's not, what's not to like uh, with that? Uh, so with banks thinking about this and potentially entering into the fintech and may, maybe more specifically into the payment space, how are companies like NetPlus or other payment companies or even across fintechs, I can open this up for, to everyone to talk about. How are we seeing this as a threat or something that is actually welcome for, 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 the, for the space? Okay, so in the, yeah, it's great that GT Bank spoke about it, but I think all the banks have started making their moves. As a company, we've seen a lot more partnership requests from the banks. So I, um, the way I see the interest is more from, they've come to realize that growth will come from the fintechs faster because the banks are still quite traditional. Though, yes, the COVID was not expected and everybody's trying to adjust, but even with that, whether you like it or not, fintechs are faster, they're quick to deploy. When they see something's not working, they're flexible and they move around faster. So you have that on one side. You also have the possibility of banks investing. Um, they probably will take up shares. And why would they do that? Because if the fintech is moving, even though the bank is not moving as fast as that, they can also get market share through that fintech by doing that as well. And um, also, the, I mean, the partnerships, depending on the kind of service that the fintech is offering, might also be very beneficial to their brand. Look, I, th I think that uh, greater ecosystem participation is never a bad thing, right? Because at the end of the day, any tech-driven or digital service um, needs to be supported by an ecosystem of players for consumers uh, to actually adopt it and adopt it at a satisfactory rate for everybody. You know, now having said that, it is not easy for a leopard to change its spots, right? Banks are already in payments uh, to a good extent now. They offer payment services um, in their apps and they offer payment over uh, USSD. You know, but what, what I have not necessarily seen banks do is uh, take a diagnostic review of what else to do to innovate around the products that they are already sort of pushing out. That, that's where I think... Um, you know, tech startups are, have to move a lot faster because it's more, it's more critical to our survival. So I think there are some forms of participation that are easily available to banks. I think investment, like uh, Adekunbi mentioned, uh, is a possibility. Partnership is a possibility. Uh, I think it would be probably easier for banks to learn how to be better partners than, to, than, than for them to learn how to be fintechs. Uh, I think that First of all, it's a validation that the growth is going to come from some of these things that we're doing as well. Uh, and they're beginning to also recognize that. But I also, in, in early conversations with some of them, I think there's also the realization that, look, we can't do things the way a fintech would do it. So they're thinking about it almost like an arm's length venture, where, look, we can support, we have infrastructure, we have, we have customer base, how can we sort of collaborate to make this work? Rather than them coming into the space fully as a challenger and then pushing things across. So, so Kobe, I think the final question on the payment side is to really talk about some of the emerging payment technologies that are coming into 
not just the Nigerian space, but uh, emerging markets generally, that are either currently driving uh, adoption and transaction, but also, uh, you know, could bring uh, more people uh, into the financial services space. Uh, space. That, you know, that is, uh, uh, you know, encouraging financial inclusion, so to speak. So the first thing is um, you have the peer-to-peer -peer payments, which is both local and international. So you have the card schemes, you have the banks actually telling you, oh, just do a funds transfer. And in less than five minutes, you actually get that international funds transfer. And it's not just the local, so it's not a Nigerian card to a Nigerian card, but you have some services that are being driven by fintechs that will allow you to do the Nigerian card to the international card, which wasn't being done before. And we'll see more of that as we evolve. Um, we're definitely going to see a whole lot more in terms of um, QR payments. QR payments is going to grow even though the adoption seems slow, whether we like it or not, one of the easiest ways to security is cryptocurrency because you're sure that the, the, fees are always, the fees are always rising. The investment is kind of low compared to what you get in the long run. And with that, they're all payments because there's car payment transactions going on and it's on the web. So the good news is NetPlus will make money because of the processing platform. Before COVID, you know, a lot of uh, ordinary consumers are looking at other types of or other channels of investment. Uh, how do I leverage all this investment led by uh, technology, including cooperative? Uh, how, do, how do I how do I get on on it? So, uh, could you explain in a sense how you guys are positioning your platform to be able to deploy those kind of technology to? people that are looking for. For us, we had a clear mission. Our mission is to ensure that, you know, people working hard can, you know, live financially sustainably. Let's, let's put it that way. We need people to be able to earn the right income. We need them to be able to, you know, save, invest, do whatever it is that they need to do to be able to live comfortably. And for that, for us, all we're seeing is that we need to come from it from an angle of what we call embedded finance. We started by building a platform for cooperatives, and that has, uh, I think, that has created enough awareness for our business. And you know, we're riding on the back of that now to do what we want to do at at, at scale, which is cooperative are building homes. How do we create the right platform for you to be able to invest in a home homes project, uh, for example, or, or as a member of a cooperative or as an individual? How do you plan to have your own home, right? Uh, so, technically, what we're doing, what we're building out is, is more of a marketplace of financial services. Uh, think of it as the conga for banking. Uh, you know, and that's sort of a fantastic example now that uh, Nandi is on the call. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what we've seen is we've seen, let me say about four or five verticals. We've seen housing, we've seen agriculture, we've seen small, like small business micro, small micro businesses, shops. Uh, we've seen um, just general trade, you know, multiple types of trade, uh, things like tailoring, transport. Uh, and these are pretty large sectors uh, to think about it. Uh, from, oh, what investment options do I have? I mean, I think for us, what thing is that Nigeria is such a shallow market. Uh, when you think about investment, the asset classes are very, very basic. Uh, treasury bills was everybody's safe haven. Now that is gone away so that people can begin to deepen their relationship with the market. It's completely shallow. You need to start thinking beyond just fintech. You need to start thinking beyond just tech. But you need to start thinking beyond just financial services. You need to start thinking in real, real sector, trading, farming, agriculture, um, housing. You need to start thinking into those ad sectors to see where the, uh, uh, the protection will be for your business. Thank you, Salami, for that. Hope you enjoyed the discussion with contributions from Kumbi and Salami. For other tech-related stories and articles, please make sure to check techroundup.tv. As always, we we'll would love to hear your comments and feedback, so please connect with me on LinkedIn at Wale Farrell and subscribe to the Tech Roundup YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Until next week, take care of yourself and have a great weekend. Good night.